Hi folks, glad you could join us again. Now today what we're going to do is we're going to be taking this G366 and a whole forma, um, you know, a clone of the MS-351, and we're going to be doing a muffler mod on it. So before we get into doing the muffler mod and tearing it apart and showing you what we're going to do, we're going to do some quick cuts here so we can get a, a feeling for where's this thing at right now. If we cut through this, this is oak. It's the uh, biggest piece I've got of old dead oak laying around that's been dried up. You can see here, I'm, I'm not going to show a time against that last little bit that I didn't cut. And uh, we're going to get these two cuts, and then we'll knock off a, uh, an average for the cut. This is before the muffler modification, once again. And you can see here those two cuts. The uh, engine, we did it at normal pressure. It took about, on the average, 8.3 seconds for those two cuts. As you can see the saw, but one of the things to remember about this saw is it's just under three years old. It's been in service quite extensively. Uh, did some cleaning on it quite a bit uh, for a issue with a loose wire connector just a little while back, a couple weeks back. So that's why it's not as filthy as it would have looked. As you look inside of here, this is the front view. We're going to be pulling the muffler off. There's three uh, bolt screws that hold it in place. One down in the bottom front and two through those access holes that go right down through the muffler. This has what I call a rear exhaust that turns around and finally kicks it forward. Anytime you have a, an exhaust system like that, you pick up a lot of burning discoloration on the uh, right side of the crankcase as you're holding it facing forward. And that's because of the heat. You also have a much hotter piston and cylinder because of the heat coming off the back end of that muffler. What they basically do is they divert all the air from the front to the rear. It hooks the U-turn, then it comes forward. And there's this great big shield in the back to try and pro project that air coming forward, that hot exhaust air. Uh, and that sheet, that shield is very, very hot, of course. And through this process, not only will we be <clears throat> making this saw run faster, I mean, run stronger and breathe better, we're going to make it run a lot cooler because you're going to be getting rid of that exhaust a lot, lot better, much better than what you can think of. Now, as we pull the muffler out, we'll pop the bolts out. That silver thing you're looking inside there, that's a heat shield to help protect the cylinder and piston from the extreme heat of the muffler, of course. Now, <clears throat> what I'm pointing at, and it's very, very difficult to see, is the gasket. This is a two gasket setup, a gasket against the jug and a gasket directly against the muffler with the heat shield being in between. Now look at this piston. This is after two and a half years, more than two and a half years of use. And that's what that piston looks like. I'd say that saw is doing a pretty good job. Uh, anyway, that's where we're at. Now what we're going to do is pop a little plug in there. I know the, the, the jug was up and the, to help reduce anything coming through, but now we're still going to go ahead and plug it. <clears throat> to prevent contamination from getting down inside the crankcase or scarring the piston. Put our screws in a little tin, of course, so we can keep track of them. I'm a parts collector as I take stuff apart, try and keep track of it. There you can see the gasket on the back of the muffler right now as we're looking at it. Um, now, <clears throat> I'm pointing at a rim that goes all the way around this muffler. It's a two-piece muffler, and this rim that goes around it, it's pressed and hold these two halves together. What I'm going to do, it won't be on film, I'm going to take a grinder, a regular bench grinder. You can use a grinder, a Dremel, a hand grinder, a blowtorch, anything to, to reduce that rim, cut the edge off the rim, and then you can just pop the ring off and it comes off. Or you can pry the two things apart, since it's a press fitting, with a uh, paint can opener. In this particular one, we're going to, you can see that flashy area that, right there. That's where I ground the edge off. And as soon as you grind that off, now you can pull these two pieces apart. And also, as you look back on the rear, you can see that huge deflector that deflects all the exhaust gas forward uh, from the muffler. As we pull it apart, and I pull it apart slowly because I've never had it apart. I don't know how loose things are in here and which way things are going to fall, so I wanted to be able to see. Those are simply the, the two guides for getting your muffler attaching bolts in place. This is... In the words of free-flowing air, horrific. Look at that diffuser, all those holes. But in, even though it's got all those holes, look at how much air resistance we're pumping right straight back into that engine. 
And then on top of all that, it's got to go in that itty bitty tiny hole I just pointed at. Then it makes a U-turn and goes back and comes out back by the door. See, look at how tiny that hole is. That is a uh, star 27 screwdriver or driver that I've got in my hands. And it barely fits in that teeny tiny hole. Now, how in the world is the exhaust efficiently going to get through there to come out the back? If you just looked at the shroud in the back, you'd think, oh, that's a pretty good size exhaust. No, well, we're going to pull this stuff out. And I mean, literally, I'm going to break it free. I'm not going to show that on camera because I didn't know how long it would take. It's just a matter of working it until it comes free. It's just tack welded onto the back there. Now you can see I was able to get it off. Uh, it's mostly intact. Just one of the wings didn't come off with it. That was tack welded to the back of the muffler there. Now, as I pull it apart, you're going to get a much better look. See that tiny hole in the back? Okay, that's where it goes up against the deflector and makes another U-turn to come forward. But before it got there, it went through that other little tiny hole you can see on the left bottom corner of the screen. And look at where it comes out. See that hole? That's smaller than my little finger. And it's that inside diameter that counts. When we look inside the back here compared to the exhaust port, look at it. It's not even 20-25% of the total size of the exhaust. Not even 25%. When we change this, we're going to end up with a system that comes in just at the 70% size of the exhaust port. That way we can get a certain amount of back resonance that's taking place and we can get some real good scavenging going on. Anyway, that's what we're going to do to it. Now, that back shield, as you can see, we're going to cut it off and then we're going to put our new port right up at the front somewhere. Um, so that's where we're going to move from now, okay? And we're going to head for, gosh, I guess over to the workbench and take a torch to it. There we go. We're getting all set up, ready to run the torch. Now, okay, we're going to cut this off with a plasma torch. You can use a regular blowtorch, oxycetylene. You can uh, cut it with a uh, stick welder. You can uh, cut it off with a Dremel. You can cut it off with a disc from any rotary disc grinder. Uh, there's lots of ways to cut that puppy off. I just happened to be using this because, in my opinion, it was a fairly quick, easy way to do it. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with one of these plasma cutters. They, they ran off uh, electricity and air from a compressor. So to me, it's a relatively cheap way to do it. Another thing I like about cutting this away is I don't throw a lot of grinding material out. You, if you want to use an angle grinder and throw a cutting disc on it, works great. Uh, I'm an asthmatic and I have less reaction to cutting this away than I do with all the dust from cutting with an angle grinder. Now, once we get this off of here, I'm going to break that little piece off. Then I'm simply going to take vice grips and the pieces that are remaining, they're just tack welded. Okay, they're not air sealed perfectly. They're just tack welded. So I'm going to break the remaining pieces off with a pair of vice grips. And they'll come off relatively easy. It's so easy, it's not really worth showing. But that's exactly what I'm going to do. And uh, once I do that, this whole back end will end up being very clean. And once that's done, then we'll turn around and we'll patch that hole in the back. We're no longer going to use that. Now, you don't have to take this apart. You could have left that in place and it would have still functioned for you. I just wanted to get rid of that extra heat back there. And I wanted to also allow for the engine cooling with the fan to take place because without that shroud there, now that cooling air that comes up around can directly hit that exhaust muffler where the real heat is and get rid of it. So now you can see we're, we're welding that little patch in place and you, you can weld that any way you want it if you want to do it. Like I said, you could have left it in place. You didn't have to take it off. The original concept was just to clean up, go in there and get the guts out of this thing so it could breathe. Now that's my new, <clears throat> new exhaust. On that exhaust, that will be 70% of the area that our exhaust port has. If the exhaust port has 100% area, that port right there, that muffler exhaust port, it will be 70% the size area-wise of the exhaust port coming off the, uh, off the engine. And now I'll, I had it tack welded when I was showing it to you. Now I'm just finishing up those welds going around there. And we're not going to show you every little bit of this whole process simply because it, you know, it takes a little while and you might get kind of bored and quit watching it. You want to skip ahead? You don't want to watch the welding? Do it. Um, 
as you can see there, we're done with it. I'm cooling it off with a little bit of air after we're finishing up heating it. That port's pretty well intact. I had I damaged one little corner. This is the final product. If you want to stop this and zoom in if you have the capability, you can see that it, it's a fairly clean installation. It's very similar to what was originally on it, except the exhaust is up on the front. Now here we go. Uh, she's all warmed up, running, and we're going to make some more test cuts. Now you saw the, the first cuts that we did at the very beginning of the video, and we'll time these cuts too. This happens to be a different log, same tree, it's just that I had cut up the other log by accident. And this one here, you'll notice when you look at the blade in it as it goes through it, it's actually slightly bigger than the previous log. Now this is after the modification. And I'm laying into it, and I'm not really getting all the four stroke out on that cut. Sweet. And I just got a little bit of it out right in the very middle of that. So you can see I've got it running a little bit too rich still. Um, I can lean it out. I've already richened it up because when I went to initially tune it after adding the muffler, as normal, you have to retune your engine. And uh, I simply may have gotten it a tad too rich. Now, that gave us a performance upgrade. Our performance went up 30%, folks. There's a lot of things that took place. Number one, we have a cooler running piston and cylinder. We have a cooler running exhaust. We have much more free-flowing exhaust. It isn't just the outlet size, but it's, it's that doggone diffuser that they had built inside. We went in and took the guts out of that thing. So it made all the difference in the world. And so when the air comes through now, it just tapers up. It just continues to flow right out that exhaust. I wanted to show you here uh, how it can cut with the full blade. Uh, you know, I always like to see what can a saw do with the full blade engaged? You know, the full length of that blade. I want to see the whole blade in the wood. And there you get to see it. That's probably about a 20 second cut, I'm guessing. Uh, and as you can see there, it, it was, if you watched it when it was going on, it's the full length of that blade. So, uh, she's running great. Got no, no qualms about that with a 30% upgrade on a uh, very safe modification to the saw. I mean, this is what I call a low risk modification. And if you couldn't do it yourself and you could find someone to make a muffler for you, you could have them sell it to you, you know. Uh, and no, I'm, I'm not looking to sell mufflers. This is not an ad or a commercial, folks. Uh, but that old girl is running great for being almost three years old.